Good afternoon, everyone. Um, today is uh, February 9th. Uh, this is our special meeting uh, regarding uh, the upcoming ARPA agenda. I kind of view this as this is our study prep before our ARPA exam tomorrow. Um, and there's been, I wanted to basically say thank you um, to Cindy, Joya, Adam, Leslie, Bonnie, Tom uh, for their input on, on what we're about to look at today. A lot of great discussion. A lot of a flurry of ideas, and uh, it really all kind of came together over the last uh, 24 hours. So again, thank you to everybody involved uh, on that. Um, so um, obviously, we do have a quorum. I can see that we have um, election of officers, um, and our, our current vice chair is Tom Penelo. Um, and I did speak with Tom um, previously. He says if if uh, he is interested in staying in that role. If, if nominated, but I'd like to open up for discussion if anybody else has an interest in serving as vice chair of EDIC. I think Tom would do a great job. I'd make a motion that he be kept on as vice chair. Is there a second? I'll second it. Thank you, Marco. Any discussion? Any comments? Okay, great. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Nay. Aye. aye. All right, Tom, your robe and your with the special markings on the sleeve is on its way. Um, over to you now. Um, all right, let's get right into the meet. Um, this is a, it is a special meeting. We do, uh, do again have a, a very important meeting tomorrow with the uh, ARPA subcommittee from the town council. Um, and I, I guess, uh, Juliet, I'm going to let you kind of get in and get organized and or Denise on this as well. Um, we'll just go right into ARPA funds. Do, is there a particular order that you guys would like to start in or what we want to consider first, uh, South Sea, Berlin, or marketing? No, oh, whatever you want to do. Whoever's ready. Well, this is Cindy. Can you hear me? Yes. Since I, since I, um, I'm walking and um, I don't have the document just right in front of me. Maybe we start with the marketing. Absolutely fine. Whoever's so, gonna do it tomorrow, I think would be the one who'd make the presentation of it so that you get a rehearsal before tomorrow. Absolutely. <laughs> Anybody interested in being the leader for uh, presenting tomorrow? I know uh, Leslie is not available on the call today. She wasn't able to make this meeting. Um, so I don't want to speak on obviously on her behalf. Um, anybody interested in spearheading the, uh, uh, the marketing presentation? I think Leslie's going to do it tomorrow, but just for today, if somebody can take her place. I, I spoke to her earlier and she did confirm she's willing to do it if no one else is um, available or would like to. Perfect. Um, Joya, um, you know, and or Denise, you guys have had a lot of communication and or with Bonnie and probably but might be a little bit more versed on some of these items. Um, so if one of you guys would like to just read through the marketing committee document, um, I'm, I'm fine with that. Joya, go ahead. Okay, so we are starting with a ask for the facade improvement program to uh, replenish it and bring the balance up uh, to, to $200,000, asking $87,000 from the ARPA funds. And um, we've also asked for an additional $50,000. Um, so that would bring our total to 250 in the end, if they give us the ARPA money for this. Uh, the program has successfully funneled approximately 1.1 million into the community through the program. During the past five years alone, $750,000 was put into the program uh, or paid out from the program. Uh, the majority, 73% of this funding previously came from steep grants and Urban Act money. The steep grant program has not been funded for the previous two years and future funding will not be for another two to three. Urban Act money is no longer available as the program has been dissolved. The facade improvement program offers property owners the ability to upgrade the visual aesthetics on the facade of their building. 
EDIC will typically match the funding at a 50% match with a maximum award of 50,000. We have listed and shown some before and after pictures of some notable projects that are recent. These are in Old Weathersfield along Silestine Highway, Berlin Turnpike, as well as Walcott Hill Road. So it does cover commercial areas throughout the town. Uh, this additional 87,000, as I mentioned, will bring our budget up to 200 and help us fund future programs, or future requests, sorry. Um, we already have interest in facade money from five businesses, uh, which includes three new building owners and two projects that were delayed due to COVID. Do you want me to pause after each one so we can discuss it? Yeah, I think that would be a good idea, okay. uh, Joya. So discussion, uh, the ask to uh, the council for ARPA funds is 87,000. Um, any questions or comments from the group regarding this particular ask? The only comment I would have, I mean, it's good um, the way it is, but if you could between now and then find out the total we took in building permits for and the increase in taxes we took in as a result of it, I think it would give us more credibility and ability to get the funds from council. Yeah, I agree with you, Tony. Joy, I know that was something you were trying to turn a rock over to find out what the <clears> revenue <throat> was based on mill rate. Any, any luck there? Well, it's, I don't have tax information like for each year. So if I look at just um, the property tax increase, because Adam had put together a uh, spreadsheet that he did his report based on, it showed, and I don't have it in front of me, but like $165,000 in increase this year, you know, additional taxes that we're receiving on the buildings. And so I multiplied that by, you know, 12, because we've been doing the program for 12 years. Over 12 years, you know, we would have recouped whatever that number is. Um, but I don't know if that's accurate. I'm not sure if that gives a, a good picture. So the way I, the other way I looked at it was to say the 106 or the, yeah, the 165 per year is like 10% return on our $1.1 million investment. So I'm curious what you'd be more comfortable with. I think we should be very careful on, on sharing numbers if we're not 100% uh, comfortable yeah. on them. I, I think the, the council deals in, in, in solid numbers. So I think we should be careful yeah. in any numbers that we talk about. Yeah. I think Tony's point is probably is very salient. Um, I think we could just say, obviously there's been a significant increase in the value of these properties, which has brought in additional tax revenue to the town and also a building per permit uh, um, uh, income to the town and that the program um, does have a, a return on investment. That's that a generic awesome. way to look at, unless you think there's a way that we can get specific data or what other ideas do people, are people maybe thinking how we could present that? And Adam, could we ballpark it? Could yeah. we just ballpark it and just say, uh, we've gotten, uh, you know, over 50% or, you know, between 50 and hundred, whatever it would be. So we're not wrong. Uh, we haven't, uh, uh, but I think I think that's helpful. I Joya, think talk I, to uh, I, talk to the assessor. Fauna can help you get those numbers. She just did it for the board board and for one of the council members. Yeah, I have a request into her for um, a grand list thing already, so I'm waiting to hear back from her. Adam had a so, comment, though. I think he did the analysis, so maybe he can shut. The oh, line. that's right. That's right. Yeah. So. I interned briefly at the Office of Economic Development in the spring, sorry, Office of Planning and Economic Development um, in the spring of 2020, well, early summer of last year. And I did my best to run numbers on the programs. And Joya is right to uh, note that, um, you know, these projects are conducted in different years. And so it's a bit challenging to look at what the accrued value is. Um, based on my research, yeah, I mean, she was right to talk about sort of the lifetime change. We experienced basically, if we remove an outlier that was uh, had an impact on the overall uh, data set, 
we have basically a cost to benefit ratio of 3.5. Uh, so every dollar invested yielded about a um, $3.5 in return in terms of the amount of increased taxable assets in the community. And that came from both looking at the change in real estate values after projects, as well as the change in personal property taxes, which is sort of the equivalent for businesses as like we pay for like car taxes, for example. Um, so we have that 3.5 that we could point to um, that I feel comfortable with. And then the other one is that um, I attempted to calculate sort of what the, uh, how long it would take to pay back the loan, the loan per se that we gave. Um, and so regardless of the amount that you invest, if you look at it on a per dollar basis, um, and we use that sort of three, $3.50 return um, for every dollar spent, without inflation, it's about seven years to make that return on investment. And we can use those figures and then talk about the fact that um, a lot of what's important to these cases is not necessarily easy to document. Um, so I think we might want to also mention that, um, you know, it might, these projects impact uh, the chance that other people in the community will want to fix up their own buildings. And then this improves the overall character and perception of the community. So it's sort of the combination of some of these factors um, that we know that we are making this money back um, in, a, in a relatively uh, short timeline and that the um, impacts are both economic and, uh, you know, I suppose culturally significant. That's great, Adam. Um, if there's a way, um, and depending upon what, what the group thinks, if we want to be, if we want to quote numbers or not, we we need to take the. Obviously, there's been an increase in in, in resale value and property value and benefit to the town. That overall view, or we can get more specific as Adam has offered numbers. Do we want to put those numbers together, um, maybe, and include those in this report? Thoughts? I don't think anybody wants to do that. <laughs> if, if that's what they're, um, just get, tell me, just yay or nay, whether or not you think we should be specific or if we should be um, more um, generic on our approach. Well, Mark, I, I, I will say Adam brought up a great point. For every dollar that we invest, we get 3.56 back. I mean, just that alone should be enough to show uh, with anything that you're getting, a, you know, you're not flatline, we're getting something back. So I think that's specific, but it's, you know, we don't know exactly. We say $1 million, did we get, you know, the percentage back for that? I, I, I like that. I think uh, it shows that our investment is sound. Mm -hmm. I would just use that one sentence, Tommy. I agree with you. Uh, I agree. I, I, think it's, I think it's great. There's not a lot of tax money where you actually get a return on it uh, for a tax dollar spent. I think, I mean, it's an investment. Yeah, I can maybe group together that and maybe just like some of these really specific figures if we want, and then we can add that. Um, most of these figures have an asterisk. Like for example, I said that there was uh, an exclusion that made it so that we have um, a 3.5 X return. Uh, yeah, so things like I, that. I, would just, I would just say that some of the council members really, um, they don't want specifics. They wanna know certain things. Uh, there's a couple of guys, I mentioned their names on the council that will get specific and we'll probably have you there for it, Adam. Uh, but for the general part of it, most councilmen hear some of the stuff you just said, they'll be for it. Okay, well then that sounds great. I think that we can just, we, we talked about lots of pros and pros of the program anyways, and right. that's probably what's most impactful anyway. Exactly. Great. Adam, so if you can coordinate that with Joy, that'd be great. With if we're gonna, if, do we, if we want to put that in in writing, obviously, or in print, that one sentence, I think that's great. Good. Any other questions regarding the ask at eighty-seven thousand for the facade improvement program? Yeah, this is Cindy. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Um, I'm driving, so this is not great, but um, I think we should ask for more. Uh, you have a like a plan A or plan B, but why not just go big? Because 
it's a great program and I, you know, we can see that we earn it on our investment. It's, it also brings in private dollars. I mean, it's just a win and we have the monies. And why not? Cindy, will you give up some of your money to go over to this committee? Well, I don't know. I mean, we don't know exactly, actually, how much we're asking for and what we can get for 200,000. Uh, so you're saying we have an allocation and that is fixed at this point? Yeah, right now, that's, that's the recommendation to the council. They could cut it in half. They could give you zero. They could say, here's a million, which I doubt. <laughs> but uh, what I'm saying is, I mean, if has has the seven point seven million dollars already been carved up? I've got more projects than I do money. Um, Bonnie, okay. I just have a question. I mean, oh. but how much? How far is eighty seven thousand going to go? No, you have two hundred and fifty. How far? How far? That's if that's if we get the CIB fifty thousand. That that's not a lock. So if we don't get it, it'd be 200,000, but we are going to ask that CIP and they have been good to us in the past. I don't know, but past performance does not guarantee future results. Okay. Um, All right. All right. So then I guess my question is, what's the total budget? That 600. No, for, huh? for, um, wait, let me ask, what is the total uh, budget for the facade program that we kind of expect if we get this 87,000. 200, you have 118 or something like that already in the general fund, plus the 50 from CIAC if they give it to you, plus this 87 totals of 250,000. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Bonnie, I, I just, ahead, I'm sorry. Um, Bonnie, I just have a question. I know that you partitioned money off um, to be presented a certain way, but if the council says no to say the, the Celestine Highway project, um, or is that, does that mean that the money won't come over and benefit the other side, like the facade improvement? I, I thought we we're going for a general amount of money and that it could fill, fill the buckets as we need them. And I know that we're going specific buckets, but I'd like to know why, why can't, uh, you know, as I brought up before, we brought up the trash barrels and the flags and things like that. That could go on to the Celestine Highway budget or the, I, I just don't understand well, you why. Can, we're, we're you just, can, you can. That's what this meeting is all about. Right. I mean, well, that, I'm just saying, I don't know how that, um, I, I don't know how the council is going to take the Celestine Highway project. Uh, I and either. I don't know how they're going to take ours. But I would say if they don't, they don't like the Celestine Highway at all, can we... Say, okay, well, we need some more money back into the sure. facade improvement. Or sure, you can. I just want to make sure that we have that because it seems like we've, we've got like this hard stop in the middle of it when we talk to you about it. No, but the thing was, if I don't get, if I didn't get you guys, just the same thing I'm doing with the council, I don't get you guys something to play with, to at least talk about. We weren't getting anywhere. Yeah, I got you. So that's why I just threw those numbers out. You know, you could say, Okay, a hundred thousand to Silas Dean, and everything else is going to facade up to the six hundred. I it doesn't bother me, but I didn't know what else to do to kind of get a discussion going. Bonnie, I just want to say that not the last meeting, but the meeting before, I did provide an outline breaking down concepts and ideas along with pricing. I, it it hasn't made it to this final draft here, but that was done. So I just want to be on record for that that there was movement and there was items actually presented at the EDIC meeting about certain ideas and concepts at that time. Um, but I just want to be on record for that. I think I think Cindy brings up a very good point. I think the idea of, and so does Tom, I think we should discuss a potential plan B. If if they say that they don't like a certain, maybe they don't like our marketing budget, but they love Southstein Highway and Bruin Turnpike, does that mean we lose the 200 grand that we have for that particular item? I think what that's what Tom is saying is that our overall ask is 600,000. If, if based on advice and counsel we get from the subcommittee, they like or dislike other areas, would like to still be able to retain these funds and come back to them um, with other concepts or ideas utilize, utilizing that money. And that's what you would say to them. Okay. Absolutely. All right. Thank you, Bonnie. Yep. Okay, guys. Um, 
I think as a plan B, we should be cognizant of the fact that um, if, if we do have an issue that I think the facade improvement program certainly is our, our best and, and brightest tool that we've got. Um, in using any of those. I got a few here, uh, 115, I have to- I have Yeah, no problem. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, wait, class. Um, Thank you. Yeah, I got a few here, uh, 115. Anyway, um, let's, we'll, we'll talk as we go through the rest of this stuff, but I think having some type of plan B to fall back on and making sure the council knows that we are interested in utilizing the full 600 is important. Any other questions other than Cindy's comment on potential more funding for the facade improvement ask? Any other questions or comments on that? No, just thank you for the clarification with regard. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the clarification with regard to the total funding for the, uh, the uh, facade, I wasn't clear on that. So thanks. And I think there was a question um, and I think we have, it was noted in, in this report that there's potentially five potential asks right now. Most of them are fairly significant in size and scope and could uh, potentially meet the 50,000 max. Um, okay, um, any other questions or comments regarding our ask of 87,000 for facade improvement? All right, let's go to item number two, Ms. Joya. Okay, uh, the next thing we're asking for is a communications manager, social media and marketing um, person. Uh, and we're asking $50,000 for this. Um, I'm gonna read what was written. So another program EDIC feels is strongly needed is, is in the area of communication with potential developers, businesses, and our residents. We need to sell our town telling everyone about our attributes. We would like the ability to hire a freelance slash independent contractor to help us send the word out about Weathersfield. We have identified several key areas that need improvement. Two-way communication between businesses and the town, this would need a complete database that can be created using existing information for businesses and building owners from the databases from the tax department and assessor's office and by partnering with the chamber. Social media, including Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, as well as the Hartford Business Journal, journal all need regular content and someone to respond to questions. The town does not have that now. Our goal is to develop a unified and approved message that comes from the town to area developers that we are open for business and ready to work with you. This would enhance regional economic development efforts such as CERC, which actually should be advanced CT, uh, DECD programs that we can take to our community and bring to the businesses. I know one one issue with that right off the bat is the when the ARPA funds came out, they said we can't fund anything that's not going to continue after the ARPA funds are gone. And I know the way we wrote that, hopefully we're just paying like a I hate using it like a marketing firm or something like that. I think that's a, I, I love that idea. I just don't know how we're going to sell it to the council. And and Tony, I'd love to hear your Tony Martino. I'd love to hear your thought on that. Um, there's, a lot of, Tom, there's a lot of people. Go ahead. Just, I'm sorry. Just so you know, it doesn't say that you cannot, but it does not recommend it okay. because the town budget has to pick it up at some point if it's a if it's a staff person. So therefore, they just don't recommend it at all. But they don't say no. They just are saying, if I were you, I wouldn't do it. That's all. I have one question on this that dawned on me while I was reading it. Is the $50,000 for one year? Or are we saying that would be spent having a contractor for two to three years, let's say, just guiding us? <clears throat> so I, I mean, I just I'm just putting that out there. I, I love it because we probably get somebody uh, continually for a while. If there's money involved, I just don't know. I just don't know how we're going to sell it as a um, when when other departments are screaming up on you right now. They need help, so I don't I don't see how we're going to get that across. And that's why I asked Tony to weigh in. I, I'm the I, the just so you know, Tommy. There was an area. Uh, it was out of the FAQ section of the ARPA site that says funds may be used to pay administrative costs, including payments to consultants and/or payroll to assist with the implementation of ARPA projects. 
This includes the cost of consultants to ensure effective project management, as well as legal and regulatory compliance. Funds may also be used to increase staff capacity in order to stabilize government operations. So I, 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 I'm not really sure how to interpret that last line, but we could, we could have that ask. You know, Bonnie, I know you have connections over in Newington. I was looking at the Newington Communications Department and they list four full-time employees um, in Newington, um, where I know from an IT perspective, they've got chief information officer, network administrator and project leader, network application specialist and application specialist. They've got four people in that department. Um, we have basically one and a half, is that fair? No, you've got uh, two that are already here. You have a third position that will be doing some of the social media. They start interviews next week. And then we share a body with the um, Board of Ed. So we've got two, um, two full-time, is that correct? Right now, a third one interviews will start next week. Okay. Bonnie, and, Bonnie, can you explain that a little bit as to what you said they're gonna start interviewing and that person will be doing some of the social media? How most, is that? Most of it's gonna be working with the police because do, uh, they need, police need somebody to do a lot of IT, but they will be doing some social media, but that will not be 100% of their job. So how is, is, it's an IT person who's also going to be responsible for doing like their Facebook page? Yeah, Tom Hempel, when he was here before he retired, did that. And then when he retired, the council did not replace the position. So it would be a full-time town employee, full-time IT employee um, working just with the police department? Yes, but also helping out our side um, and the police with any kind of web page, Facebook, that kind of thing. But the bulk of the duty is going to be police. Marco? So I just wanted to add, so um, Bonnie, myself, and uh, was it Derek? Is it yep. Derek Sula? Derek and Felix, right. They're the full-timers now. Yeah, so Bonnie, Derek, and I had a chance to review some web analytics for the town, um, specifically for the town of Weathersfield website. And Bonnie, correct me if I'm wrong. There were some eye-opening things in there. Um, I shared them were, with the department head yesterday. Yeah, that were discovered. And a lot, a lot of those things. So we're looking at traffic and trends um, that no one's really watching, paying attention to, or doing anything about. So it speaks to what we've all been, you know, referring to in terms of we have no marketing person. We have no, we have no, you know, dedicated person behind this. Um, I hear Tom's, you know, sentiments and others about obviously, you know, the funds potentially needing to be um, not used on a year-to-year -year basis. Um, I think that was pretty clear by several conversations. Mm -hmm. However, there is something in this that, you know, again, with my conversation with Derek and Bonnie, we are, we are just, I mean, the town just flatly has no resources for it. Um, so my question is, you know, I, I would love to see some money thrown at something like this position, you know, we're talking about, or at least some consulting up somewhere um, to get some, you know, some momentum behind it. It's literally just, you know, it's ignored. We have nobody to do it. I think trying to skirt away from the employee issue is really important. Um, and I think the, you, the group brought up in the marketing meeting that we review them more as a freelancer. Um, uh, and I, I, the idea of a consultant was discussed as well, but if you're bringing a consultant firm the hourly that you pay versus what you get might not be a great ROI compared to just hiring a, a qualified freelancer who just focuses directly on the town. Tom, I think you had a question. Yeah, um, and, and I've made this point in the past, but I, and I think I'm, I'm, I apologize that I didn't get to review this before uh, it was circulated, but I think we do need to hit as one paragraph, at least in this proposal um, that our town is uncovered right now. We are not being covered by anybody. So we, in, in, in a certain respect, it would be like hiring our own reporter because that's the way that news is created these days. And so I think, you know, to remind people, they say, well, we have the Hartford Current. We have, you know, uh, no one is covering us since, unless something bad happens. Um, and and I know that's the way that the Hartford Current is working now. Some of these other sites, like Patch is working that way, that 
it, you, it, it would, we need somebody to be writing stories about Weathersfield that then wind up on the Hartford Current website and that wind up in patch. Um, and, and I think, again, we can debate the importance of that, but um, I sort of feel it every day that, that, that you know, I, I know for a fact that the Hartford Current is just, and this is just the way they're operating now, they're not covering town council meetings anymore. They're not covering planning and zoning meetings anymore. So we have a lot of stories that we can tell that are just happening in the normal work that, that, that our town commissions are doing every, you know, and the town council is doing um, that's just not, not being reported and it's not getting out there. And it benefits the residents of Weathersfield and, event, and it definitely will benefit people from outside of Weathersfield as well. So I, I just wanted to add that and I can suggest some language and I'll send, I'll circulate it. That would be great, Tom. Tony? Uh, just a follow up to, you know, filling in for what Tom was asking, <clears throat> you know, knowing how council thinks, uh, you know, they, I mean, you can look at the board ad, they start off with grants to fill positions and then, period and then periodically the state eliminates the grants and then they automatically go into the school budget and have to be filled because they need that program now. On the town side, you know, we're hurting. We need more employees there. There's, you know, no if hands are about it, you know, but, uh, you know, get this person through a grant and then say, then after three years, we got to fund it. It might be a no. I would say, you know, the best bet is probably to get hire you know, a firm to do it for us and say that that person is going to relieve some work from the departments that they're currently doing to free them up to do other stuff that's needed. That might sell it. I mean, just saying you want the, you know, the body and then when the time runs out, you got to add it to the budget. You know, if you put that person in there and this money goes over the three years, as an example, at the end of the three years, we can show where the savings were. And then maybe the town manager would be able to justify putting in a position to cover it or renewing it at least to, you know, keep things going up and freeing up our, our current department heads and staff from the things they're doing to do other things. Thank you, Tony. Can I just add, um, I agree with, with Tom Carson's, you know, analysis of the, of the reasons for this program. I think that it's definitely necessary when we think about the overall projects for economic development. And with respect to this conversation about ARPA and the potential of this falling into the budget in the future, I think that the explanation on this document that we're looking at that says that we would like the ability to hire a freelance slash independent contractor to help us send out the word about Weathersfield is pretty instructive of the fact that there is no intent to have, you know, to become, to be in a situation where we need to continue this, right? We might be interested in expanding to a full-time position in the future, but uh, this what doesn't necessarily necessitate a uh, folding in of this item into the future budget, especially given that we're being open and transparent about the fact that we're interested in using these resources uh, in a short-term basis. Yeah, I think that's a very good point, uh, Adam. And, I'm, and I, I think if we can show a, re, a return on investment, I mean, as Tom said before, nobody's reporting. If we get an article in the Hartford Current about a great new restaurant or a great new business in the town of Wethersfield that comes through this communications director and it gets read nationally and business floods to that particular uh, business, that's, that's, that's a return on investment. I mean, communicating the successes um, of the town on a statewide basis is, is really critical. Um, and again, as to, to Adam's point, this is a freelancer and the whole idea behind this was to put somebody in and fund them for a year. And if we can show a ROI and specific results, then at that point, we have a good argument to go back to council and going, this should be a full-time position. Uh, or maybe the experiment goes absolutely nowhere and we don't get a return on investment. We know that we wouldn't ask for it uh, for, uh, the, to budget on a go forward basis. Um, but social media, I mean, if you watch any news at all it, on anything, social media is brought up in almost every single newscast, whether they're talking about Facebook or TikTok or 
or you name it, it's out there and we have a, we don't have a presence. And that is a return on investment. That's why couching it as a freelancer um, and not something that the town is gonna to be responsible for after 12 months, I think makes sense. Um, I don't know if $50,000 is a good number. I don't know if that's high or that's low. Any, any thoughts on that? And then Marco, I'll get to you. Actually, Marco probably knows better than the rest of us. Good. Well, that's why he's up next. Go, Marco. Um, I mean, I think it's it's right on target, but I think I think we need we need something that can be sustained. So whether it's a freelancer that's you know hired on a quarterly basis, you know, with some type of retainer, we need something that's a, a sustained effort. We don't need it for one quarter or two quarters and then it goes away. Um, I think to Adam's point, this is probably something that we need to expand, um, no matter what happens. Um, I think that that, you know, that number can change a little bit, but that's a good starting point, I think, for someone in that role. The thing I was going to add, though, I want, I want to just paint this quick picture for all of you, because I was explaining to Bonnie and Derek. So this is something in, you know, in my day job that I get to do all the time, you know, from the analytics and measurement side. So just let me paint the picture. Let's say there's, um, let's say there's 3,000 web pages in the town of Weathersfield site. Um, and I showed Bonnie or I showed this group here or town council that our top 10 or 15 most visited pages are X, Y, and Z, whatever they are. Um, you could make an argument. I think that if you looked at, like a lot of times when I work with clients, we look at, I encourage them to not look at just what's at the top. We look at what's at the bottom of the barrel. We look at, so let's, let's even just call it the top 100 pages. Because a lot of times, you know, pages, you know, let's say 50 through 100 or 51 through 100, they're not getting a lot of traffic. Those aren't your big pages. But the picture that I want to paint is this. There are probably items sitting in there towards the bottom of that barrel, okay, that aren't surfacing to the top because we are not promoting them well. Now, here's how I want to tie it back to COVID and ARPA and all of this. If we don't, so one of the ways Google is automatically um, working with all of our websites, no matter who you are, is the more you publish, the more regularly things get updated and published. Their crawlers, their bots that come out to the site every single day will reflect that. They'll come out and they'll, they'll crawl it. And then all of a sudden, all these news updates spawn. Okay, so to Tom's point, whether it's through the patch or elsewhere, even if it's not necessarily a news story specifically, there will be web pages of the town of Weathersfields that will surface organically to the top in Google search results. But that requires that somebody's feeding and cultivating on a regular basis those articles. I'm suggesting that here's, here's one of the arguments, right? Maybe we didn't do such a good job as a town providing resources on the website that could be fed through social media, organically fed through Google search results. And therefore, we didn't, we didn't use that vehicle, that communications vehicle, the way we should have. Maybe we could have done a lot better job because truth be told, we could look back at what was visited for the last several years for that matter, especially from COVID time through now, and say, look at all these you know, results. The things that were at the top aren't necessarily the things that mattered most during that time. And the things that are towards the bottom of the list, we never surfaced and brought them to the, the top because um, we didn't have anybody in that role to do that, to be really communicating the most important things, the most relevant items at that time. So I'm just suggesting that content is king on our site, but content also becomes king for you know, social media and spreading and doing exactly what Tom said, giving, giving somebody the ability to champion our town, which we don't have. So I, I think if we're just making an argument for COVID time period alone, I could show you ways that maybe in those just those measurements of the, the results themselves, the trends and traffic, where we just we didn't have anything going. So we didn't use our, our primary vehicle well enough. Yeah, it's great that people visited those top 10 or 15 pages. They probably had nothing to do with COVID. And maybe we should have been publishing more out there to really keep our, you know, our entire like, you know, um, you know, body of Weathersfield and residents updated. I'm just telling you, they would have been crawled automatically by Google. Reporters, whether they wanted to know about them or not, would have seen some of them. And, and there becomes this groundswell of, you know, percolation that happens organically. Um, and it's something that I think that it can't be underestimated. We just don't have anybody looking at it. So when those numbers are at the bottom, you know, Bonnie or myself or somebody else could look at it and say, 
my gosh, look at the, the needles in the haystack at the bottom. Those are the things that we should be promoting at the top, but no one's watching it and cultivating it. So thank you, Mark. Um, so I take that you're for the idea of a communications manager, Mr. Pace. Um, so Just a little bit. So, Cindy? You're on mute, Cindy. Um, just a quick comment, um, following up on Tom and Marco's comments, um, that it's going to require some input from, I, I guess, mostly the police department and other part, uh, EDIC, or, or I should say planning and zoning. Um, and so I, I, maybe if we put in, uh, I mean, this person, this new hire is not going to be doing all the work because the content has to come from various departments. And um, maybe if we included in our explanation and rationale that there could be training involved. Um, so maybe this temporary position um, can try, it can, part of it can build an architecture that it would be easier to maintain. Maybe you'd only need a quarter time position or a half time position later on. I think you see my point. To, to possibly make it a little more, to assist staff, train them, and also to try to make this um, architecture a little more um, self-sufficient. Yeah, I agree. If, it, if, if part of it, they have to establish a framework that they share with the other departments on how things should flow. I think there's nothing ventured, nothing gained here. I think it's a very minute uh, piece of our ask. I think we're not asking for an employee. And if again, if we look at it as a freelancer or a consultant position, let's try it and let's see if we if we yield an, our, our, a return on investment. And is it a high value to the, to the residents and the, the business owners of, of, of Wethersfield? Um, any other questions or comments? I, it seems like everybody's in agreement that with that, or I should say, is everybody in agreement that we sh this should be part of our ask? Give me a thumbs up if, if we want. I know you're on mute. Okay, we're good. Um, any other questions or comments regarding the communications position? Okay, great. Let's go on to item three, Joya. Okay, third is um, a proposal to, for the enhancement of Weathersfield's gateway roads. Um, this ask is for $25,000 to install vertical banners on street poles, existing street poles that say, welcome to Weathersfield, et cetera, perhaps highlight uh, events on Silas Dean Highway, both north and south, on Route 3 coming to and from Glastonbury, as well as on Route 515. Uh, the recommendation is to purchase approximately 200 banners at $125 each. That comes out to the $25,000. And it would be done in conjunction with the Silasine Highway and Berlin Turnpike improvements. Um, again, they would be placed on existing poles, we're not, so we're not looking to install poles. One comment I have on this when I was looking at it this morning, um, this does not include the brackets, Mark, to it install. Not include the brackets, it's just the banners. That's what Leslie told me about an hour ago or so. Yeah, um, if you look so at the brackets the first... I found are another like 200 something each. So um, if we wanted to do brackets to support these, we're looking at a $70,000 ask. So we may just need to reduce the number of banners or factor that in. Okay. I didn't have that the information. Question, I, I think the question from the council is going to be who puts them up, who maintains them, who takes them down? What do we do when they rip? Do we have replacements for them? So I think that's a, I, I feel that's a tough ask. I love the idea. I just don't know. Um, those are the questions, especially somebody like Tom Mazzarella is going to ask. Just yep. throw it out there. And the answer is town staff. And then we go back to, we need more town staff. Bingo. <laughs> um, well, I, I, those are very, very good questions. I don't know if 200 is, is not enough or too many. Um, I mean, and these are things that we can investigate. How easy is it to replace those, the signs themselves and getting more information? Um, there are some um, uh, plenty of resources that we can take a look on that. I think the idea is a great one. Um, but I think you bring up a really good, it, if, if it boils down to increased staffing or um, increased taxing on the maintenance department, um, then that is an issue. Um, but I think the ask um, 
certainly makes sense. But from a maintenance perspective, Bonnie, what are your thoughts? I mean, I know that if it's going to go back to town staff and then we need more people, I don't want to, you know, be whistling past the graveyard here. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, do you, I mean, or do you need more data to find out how are they, how are they replaced, et cetera? No, because I bet in other towns who have them and it's the town staff who take them up and down, especially if they're seasonal. Uh, and if they're ripped, they've got to get reordered. I mean, and they will rip in the bad weather. Mm. I mean, there, it's just, I mean, but that's something, you know, Tom is definitely going to ask, I'm sure. And um, that's the answer. I mean, like, like Sally always says in physical services, yes, we can do that but something else will not get done. That's all. And I, then it's up to them. I have a, Cindy? Yeah, um, I seem to remember in the early 2000s, we had discussed banners on the Stylistine Highway, but it was a state road. I think, I, I, do we know that we can install them on streetlights on a state road? I think there is some up there in our uh, in our area, town hall. So I would say the answer is yes, because I think there's others uh, in other towns. Of course, they're okay. going to tell you that you're going to take care of them. They're not going to do it, but. Okay. Well, I'm I think one of the things that we should do is we should, we can speak with Leslie or, and I can take a look at it and we will coordinate or maybe give it a, assign the effort to find out prior to the meeting tomorrow what does it take to you know to take one down to replace it maybe contact the company to find out how much labor is involved um on on number one putting them up and number two you know replacing the flags etc um if if it's a if it's a really complicated um scenario then maybe and it takes a lot of man hours maybe it's a non-starter if it's a fairly easy scenario to replace it maybe it's a good idea what are your thoughts no, I mean, they, they don't take that long to put up and down, but then again, you're diverting a person from something else. That's all. Okay. I mean, they're on a pole, they go up, down, up, down, up, down, and then depending on how many. Um, but again, it's just, and it's probably going to be a two person thing. Mm -hmm. Tony, and, Martina, and what, you, Tony, you're retired. Maybe this is something that you can do. <laughs> Come back um, as a unpaid part-time employee yeah right and you have to provide your own insurance um well bonnie you got to put two hundred fifty thousand in for a lift truck then that's just for the flags if that's okay <laughs> you know that's well yeah we do have something down there i was going to say you know i never thought about that as the vehicle to do it yeah well guys is this an ask that we is this an ask that we want to make or do we need to get some more information on it etc what are your thoughts well, if we need, I, Bonnie, if we need a truck for this, uh, I know years ago we were talking with uh, Northeast Utilities when they were getting rid of theirs, some of theirs, you know, the smaller ones, mm -hmm. and we could use it like for our electrician and stuff to do stuff. So if this goes forward, maybe we can look for something like that to get a truck at no cost or minimal cost. Julia, you were going to share something? I was just going to say, instead of putting a number of banners, you know, let's pick the right dollar amount and explore what that would, um, you know, what, what the options are. Understanding the labor cost, understanding if we can hire someone to install them, and if we just pick banners that we don't take out seasonally, for example, and just start with a small, a smaller pool of banners just to get a response and see if it if it does anything. Yeah, and the best way to handle an objection is to bring it up first. So I think in our ask, we should say, obviously, we need to consider um, town council staffing and what how that would impact the town. Those things would have to be taken into account rather than then bringing them bringing that point up to us like we're not aware of it. I think we should probably state that that we are aware of that and that it, it will have an impact and that needs to be weighed out as we price this out and and figure out if it's an initiative we're going to move forward on. I like the idea of a, a budget rather than a, uh, a fixed amount. 200 seems like a lot to start out with. So I think that's a good approach to just uh, allocate a budget and, and, and um, see what we can do with it. 
It would be that quick aesthetic visual that um, people have been looking for. All right, good. So we'll modify that and we'll also take into account the, the impact on the town and its staff in that. Are we good on that, Joya? Yep, I'll do that. Can I ask what's the resolved uh, or revised language? I will take out the amount of banners and just say we are looking for a budget to, to, to do this type of project. I'll, I'll fix it. <laughs> I'll okay. by everyone. Yeah, and well, I, you know, we need to investigate pricing and, and maintenance, et cetera, but this is an initiative that we'd like to see. Um, and we here's the budget that we'd like to put towards it. Maybe that gives us five signs, maybe that gives us 200 signs, we don't know. I think if we give the per, per cost, if we give the per cost of the banner and the, um, and the hardware. And the Okay. Okay, all those in favor, give me a thumbs up with regards to the 25,000 for the enhancement of Westfield Gateway Roads. Give a thumbs up or a thumbs down. All right, Deb, you were holding out there, Deb. I see that thumb up. Okay, very good. Um, okay, Item. next item, item yep. four, Julia. Video and commercial marketing. Uh, we're asking $25,000 for a video campaign. In conjunction with NBC Telemundo, four professionally scripted and produced four minute long infomercials about Weathersfield, old Weathersfield development zones um, would be created. We could use these videos for other marketing tools and we would have to sell our desirability to locate here. The videos would be played on local access TV. It could, they could be on town websites. And they would also be on um, NBC Connecticut, as well as their website. Uh, these could be used for tourism as well. And they could be looped in for viewing at the Big E on Connecticut Day or in the Connecticut building throughout the Big E, Big e event. Uh, the only caveat with this program is that the videos, because they're produced by NBC 30, they cannot run on competing networks such as WFSB, WTNH, but they are for our use. Um, they provided a sample video um, that they did for the town of New, uh, for the city of New Britain. Pardon me. So this would just be a way to create, you know, marketing piece for us. Uh, goes along the lines with the social media that we were looking for. Thoughts, guys. Do you know if we would own the rights to the video ourselves? We own the rights to the video, but we sign a, so we can use it personally. Uh, like we could put a video in the Keeney Center and it could play, you know what I mean? On the, can, on the when tourists come in or people go to the, to visit, but we cannot like sell it or, or put it on a different YouTube. station, you know, for an okay. advertisement as a commercial. Yeah. Yes. There's no limitations, for example, maybe if we wanted to post it on YouTube. Right, right, exactly. Yep. No, nope. it can go on our it can go there. Okay. Yep. All right. Did 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 we investigate other channels besides NBC? Um I have not. This person kept calling me for about two months. He actually started at fifty thousand dollars to do something for us and now we're at $2,000 per video. So um, that's where that is. Um, I know, I believe Peter had talked to someone. He had mentioned something to me back in November that he had talked to someone. I don't remember if it was WFSB or Fox. And they were going to do the videos for free, but then we were going to have to buy airtime. So... Um, that's how some of the other stations run it. But I can look into that. We don't have to necessarily quote NBC 30 as our um, as who we're going to do this with. I suppose we could just say we know we could get this done and NBC 30 would be one of the options. I, I we have a price point. I, I'm just throwing that out there because uh, 
WFSB is such a supporter of the town of Wethersfield, you know, for fr free uh, instances that they give us that it might be worth investigating that. Yep. I'm happy to help with that if you need it. Okay. I, I, Julia, I, I, I will say that's the, the part that I think by the videos can't out run on competing networks, then we really don't own it. You know, Kevin, I use a guy named Kevin Guilford, who worked, he worked for WFSB. He does my real estate stuff. He does probably the nicest drones. He gives a lot away. I've never seen a better photographer or a producer. And I know he would be cheaper than that too. So I don't okay. mind saying that we need 25,000 to do. Uh, okay. I, again, I'd be, I wouldn't be so specific like yep. the flags. I would be, you know, we want to start and, and give the examples. Um, and then we can go everywhere with it. We own it. Yeah, and my thoughts were also just to piggyback on Tom is if there's any way to see, you know, some samples of other videos they've done, um, that would also be helpful because to Tom's point, Tom knows, you know, obviously the work of the person he uses. We all might know somebody who does great work, um, but collectively, you know, review a few videos uh, might be helpful. Like WFSB may be a great friend. They may have done, you know, kind of some similar things for other towns. We may not like them as much as maybe what NBC's done because the creative on this is going to be, you know, very different, right? I have I have the links I can share. They they did share videos with us for this, okay. so I can share that link with everyone. Um, but I agree. Like I think we should just say we'd like to um, develop, produce for professionally scripted infomercials. Um, I don't even know if we have to say how long they are. Um, and how it would help promote the town. And I, I mean, the NBC Telemundo was just a, um, a kind of a, a way for me to pick a number. <laughs> so yeah, no matter what, the 25, that's fine. No matter we, what, you, the odds are you're gonna have to do a request for proposal anyways, because of our right. purchasing policies. Right, right. So I, I'm fine with, um, I think, just making it more generic, I think that would be, I'll talk to Leslie about it too. Um, but do we want to keep it at 25 or do you think 20? Tom, do you have any guess on Tom Pentelow? Um, since I, you I, I, really, I really, but as Bonnie said, I really don't have a price, but as Bonnie said, we we're, we have to put it out there anyways, just to, have, to figure out how we're going to use the money. So, yep. I, you know, I think 25,000 seems really high to me. Okay. Um, I, I, again, uh, I'm not using, uh, I, I do some commercial space photography and uh, video and it doesn't seem that high, but if the guy went from 50 to 25, can we get him to 12 and a half? Well, that quick? He said it's, actually, he said it's $2,000 per video. That's what he told me. So I'm not sure where the 25, when we're right. saying for videos. Yeah, ask about the math. That um, should be 8,000, Mark, right. <laughs> or 10,000. Yeah. But how about I, 10, think I think 10,000 would be a better target number. Yeah, but it's going to vary. I mean, you know, you're, we're talking about, we don't even know how it's even being storyboarded out. You know, is it a 30 second clip? Is it a three minute clip? You know, whatever it ends up being, um, how that, you know, the scope of this thing, we're just guessing, right? So until somebody storyboards this out and says, this is what I can give you for that, um, then I don't even know what we're talking about. We're apples and oranges. The sample he gave me was a four minute video and he said that's what we can do for 2000. Okay. So if, if I think that's it, was, uh, let's just pick no, a number. Let's just pick the right no number. Actors, if there's no actors or voice talent in it, we just shot a video that's three minutes long. It's got three actors and, and professional voice talent. And that was 7,500 bucks and it's slickly produced. So I think if there's if there's no voice talent and we're not hiring actors or whatnot, I, it can be. I mean, you can shoot beautiful stuff just on an iPad. Believe it or not, now I mean it's amazing the technology out there. So, what number should we go with, guys? Here and whatever, whatever we take off here, we should apply someplace else. Obviously, yeah. Um, I think I, I don't think about taking money off. I think about exactly what Marco said. It's the it's the pre-production, mm -hmm. it's the post-production, it's the story that we want to tell. Right. Depends on how much time is going to go into it. So. I think we throw a number out there and just say we're going to be doing videos. I like the way we wrote it, but I don't want to be so specific. Um, and and I think the number's fine. I don't know that we're going to get it. We don't know that we're going to get any of this, but we have to tell our story and 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 plea. And the one thing we have to tell the council people, 
uh, is that we're doing this voluntarily too for our town. That's why we're trying to sell it. That's all. If we had a marketing director, this would be easily in that person's purview. You know what I mean? Yeah. That person would have brought this to us 25 years ago. Hmm. Thanks for rubbing it in, Marco. Um, I'm we, with you. We want to... So do we want to keep this number at 25,000? Can I see a thumbs up if we want to keep it at 25,000? Okay. So we're just going to make Mark, it more one of the reasons to keep it at that is because using it free day C it could also be used for tourism. So I mean, you know, and help out with that, bringing people in. Absolutely. Um, I think we want to change though the idea in conjunction with NBC and then the parentheses at the end. We yep. just want to make it generic. Yep. Okay, very good. Item number five, community gift card, Joya. Yep, this is a um, community gift card program that is branded just for our town. You can only use the gift card within the 06109 zip code. Um, and we can select the merchants. Uh, it could be the museums, it could be just restaurants, it could be uh, locally owned businesses, local franchisees, we can exclude. Um, any type of um, big box, you know, like a TJ Maxx or something like that, if we wanted to. There's a company called Giverang that runs the program. And the way they earn their fee is by um, adding a, like a, a fee to the consumer when they purchase a ticket. So if, uh, a gift card, I'm sorry. So if they purchase a $50 gift card, there's a $3 fee that goes on top of that. And that's how they make their money. Um, it is a it is accepted anywhere. Mastercard is accepted. The if we preprint cards, they could be resold at local merchants or restaurants, um, and people can you know buy them. So one of our ideas was to create to, to kind of motivate this program to kind of give incentive to it. Is the town would invest or match. Um, a purchase. So the example Leslie gave is, you know, you buy $50 and get a free $10 card. And that's where we're looking for money to invest in this is to kind of kick it off the ground that if you purchase your first, if you purchase a card, you can get a percentage or a dollar amount added to that from the town as an incentive. Um, along with the gift card, the company provides us with a website that we can put on our Great Elm, on our town website, and it lists all the businesses that are part of this program in town. So they will put that together for us. So that's kind of a free web page that comes with it. Um, one of the things the company stated is they've noticed that when people purchase or are given a gift card, they will spend at least 50% over the gift card amount in in that shop or in the community. Um, Hartford and Middletown have both done successful programs with this model as well as Bristol. I, I just, I'm trying to figure out how that really uh, specifically helps some of the shops or restaurants or businesses in our town that uh, are not attracting business. So, you know, the, uh, we buy the, Mark, you buy the, the gift card or buy $500 with the gift card and you go to the Charles all the time, you're going to go to the Charles all the time anyways uh, and use those cards there. I know you get a deal, uh, but you were going to go there anyways. How do, we, how do we use these cards to get it to the some of the business that we need it? Because I know we talked about giving, walking into some of the businesses, giving them what do they need, new uniforms, new, uh, I don't know, new counters, new uh, pictures uh, to make it freshen up, to make them feel a uh, welcome to the town and bring more people back in. That's the only thing I, I can't see with the, the gift card. And if somebody explains it to me, I'll, I'll listen. I, think you're right. I don't know. I don't, uh, yeah, I don't know if I have, if I have an answer and I don't know if it's necessarily a bad thing. Um, if we can control where 
the money is being spent. I, you know, what I like about this program is that it benefits both local businesses and it benefits, you know, Weathersfield residents if there's a little bit of an incentive attached to it. Um, you know, if you were, I guess the question I had, even if we know the answer to it yet, is <clears throat> would we buy the gift cards in bulk with the money and then sell them? Because I think that would be the best way. I mean, I don't know. Would, again, we're creating work for people, but if you say we're, you know, we're selling fifty dollars gift cards, it's going to cost you forty dollars. Um, so people have a twenty percent bonus. We can then absorb the, um, you know, the, that three percent fee or that one and a half percent fee or whatever it is that they charge. Um, that 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 to me sounds like it would be, it, that would kind of work the best um, unless, but then again, I don't know how, how that would work. You know, if, if we were gonna have a stack of 500 gift cards for sale and then we just people order them online and then we mail them out to them. But I do like it because it does benefit local businesses. Yeah, certain ones are gonna get more business than others, but, um, but you know, we can go to every business that we wanna go to and say, would you accept it? And then, you're going to have, you know, a spot on this website that we're going to promote your business. Um, we can't force people to use it there, but the, you know, that's, you know, we're, we're doing what we can. Um, I, I do share Tom's concern about that. If I never frequent or never think about XYZ restaurant, um, I don't know that a gift, you know, I'm going to think to, purchase a, a gift card for that. But if there's a way that we could come up with to promote, you know, them all, then I would agree with that. But um, I just, I just see the favorites in town getting the most out of this. That So I'm not saying I'm not for it, just saying I think it needs to be tweaked a little bit. Yeah, and the company has ideas on how to how they're promoting these things and how they help you promote businesses in town. So they help you with that whole promotion piece. Um, you know, one of the ideas we had was like this week is restaurant week. Buy a card at one of these, or you know, you can use your card, and it can be a virtual card. It doesn't have to be a physical card. Um, we could purchase some physical cards and leave them in places for people, or you just go online and when they see somebody come through from Weathersfield, then they know to add the 20% bonus or whatever that is. So there's different things, but like if you did a restaurant week or um, I don't know, in May do something with the museums or something, you know, to start promoting tourism and the slip away tours when they come back, you know, purchase a card this week and get $10 extra or um, I don't know. You know, there's, there's different ideas. Uh, yeah. I, I, we haven't explored them all yet. Yeah. Um, one of the big uh, hits that the restaurants and beyond restaurants that use DoorDash or Grubhub or any third party vendor like that is it's taken a big chunk out of their uh, profits. I'm, I'm just thinking now maybe we could work something with that too. Maybe they have a, a way we could incorporate paying for those fees for a while. Yep. I, I hear it's up to like 30%. It's a lot. That's a lot off, off a, it's a lot of money off a of pizza being delivered. Um, I'm not, hold on. I, maybe I don't understand this. I'm not quite sure of the benefits. I'm all for buying locally and promoting local. I have some of the same concerns. I think we had the Weathersfield shop local. You kind of punched a card and then you got a reward later, but that sort of, um, I think uh, is dormant. And I, I, I'm i not sold on it. Uh, and then I guess, I'm, unless it was something like a limited number to say new residents, I, I think that would be something that could benefit new residents. Um, moving here that aren't familiar with the people, you know, and the, the businesses that are local. Is the idea that we're gonna buy these things and give them away or pitch them at reduced cost? No, there's various ways to do it. Um, we could buy some just to have some physically available like at the Keeney Cultural Center or at a, or a 
heirloom market, for example, right? Um, but it would just be, people would go out and purchase, you could purchase them online. We would promote it as a, it's a promotional program online. Yeah. So we don't have yeah. to manage it or physically hand them out or anything if we don't want to. I, I don't know about anybody else, but I have uh, a number of unused gift cards. You know, I have every intention. Um, <laughs> I may get it from a family member or whatever, and and or and they're unused. And I, that's just me. I, I apologize. I had to pop in and out. But have we explored this idea with any other towns that have have leveraged it? Um, it, it seems to be a success in Bristol and uh, Middletown. Bristol and Middletown. Yeah, I, I guess just Cindy's point, that upfront cost, putting it at risk if we don't move ahead with getting it offloaded. I love the I concept. Did. I just want to uh, refine it a little bit. I love giving back for our community and for our town and for, you know, we think of just restaurants, but it will also be some of the businesses have to be. And um, uh, is it better to take the money and, and go in to the shops? I don't know, 15, 20 shops with a couple thousand dollars each or a thousand dollars each or uplift or almost like the facade improvement, but as many businesses we give it to, um, to get the people back in there. That's all. It's just my thought. And we don't have to outlet, unless we wanted to physically buy cards and put them in shops, you know what I mean? Like with a dollar amount on them, we don't outlay any money until somebody purchases a card. Do you know what I mean? So we're not, we're not just putting 50, $20 gift cards and that are sitting there going stale. Um, the gift card would be blank. And then when somebody purchased it, our contribution would go on top of whatever they purchased. Does that make sense? Okay. It seemed like a, a, a nice way to give back to residents as well as businesses, small businesses, uh, marketing tool. Yeah, and I, I agree. Some of you might not have seen <clears throat> because um, I don't know who I circulated it to, but I, I <clears throat> excuse me, I actually used one. Um, I purchased one of the ones from Middletown and gave it to some friends and they used it, but I'm going to just circulate a link to their website because if you see how it works visually um, as a marketing tool, um, you can uh, you can absorb it a little bit better. Do any of the towns just say, "Look, they 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 go to um, restaurants and say there's 20 restaurants and one week is for this restaurant only, so they can only use and buy a card for that restaurant that one week, or is it really more of a umbrella approach or can you, how specific can you get? The company said they can tailor it pretty specific. It's, it's, a, it's a MasterCard. So any business that accepts MasterCard could accept this card. Um, but again, we can ex, you know, we could do a promotional week of just restaurants and you get a bonus or just the, you know, coffee shops, I, I don't know. Um, just the museums. It could be. It could be a variety. You can. You can make it as narrow or as broad as you want. It could just be any business in town. It's seamless to the business. Um, it's just a Mastercard. It doesn't. You know. It's. It's not like you can only spend it at the Charles. Well, I think the the point was, and somebody brought it up. I think is a good one. It's not just a promotion for the business. It's a discount for the consumer. So this is a residential you know, the residents of Wethersfield are getting a break. They're getting a discount just because they're going to their favorite restaurants all the time. Well, maybe they're favorite for a reason. So, I mean, I'm, if, it's a, if it's a way to stimulate um, business, I don't know if it's 20% discounts enough to make somebody want to go out to eat or not. Maybe, um, I think some people, they might. Um, seems like we're kind of ambivalent on this one. Any, I need more input. A different spin on it for you, Mark. Please. Something Unico did a couple of years ago, uh, working with the town, um, taking the 13,000, dividing it by 50 gives you 260 cards. Let's say we turn around and get the cards and they're good for a certain period of time. 
and give them to social services to give out to needy families and they can go spend them in the stores in this time. And that way, you know, we're helping out needy people and helping out residents, I mean, businesses at the same time. The program worked pretty good two years ago when, you know, everybody was getting laid off because of COVID and stuff. We did that and we were able to, you know, help a lot of families stretch their budgets during that time frame. You know, it'd be a giveaway. It wouldn't be, you know, but, you know, it's doing good and it's helping the economy and, and our needy in town. I like that. How do we frame the ask guys for tomorrow? We're a little bit all over the place here at this point. It's a good idea, Tony, but I don't think we've got enough specificity to present this ask at this point. Um, what, are, what are your guys' additional thoughts? I think it needs a little refinement. I think I, if I can just chime in for a second, I think that definitely uh, it could use a little refinement, but I feel like anything where you're giving back to the residents of Weathersfield, especially with, um, you know, having like a younger family, like anytime there's a promotion or a discount, like we're down to, to do something with the kids and go out, you have warmer weather coming. Um, so I think it's a great idea just to generate business. Um, in terms of the layering effect, I think you you limit people. Uh, when you say like only this week or that week, these certain things are available. Um, so my my input with, with that would be to just keep it general, but it's generating business, warmer weather's coming. I like the idea. I just think that ask needs to be a little bit more specific. So just the discount to the family is what you see the value is. If they buy a hundred dollar card and it's worth 120, you see that's a, obviously just a value to, the, to a resident. Right, absolutely. <clears throat> I think I could see a value to new residents. I think it's a way of welcoming them and um, and uh, promoting our businesses. I, that's where I, I think I'd have it targeted. And just give it away or yeah, give it away. Any other thoughts or comments? Um, this one doesn't seem like it's flying like the other ones are. Um, uh, do you guys think we should reevaluate and maybe look at this down the road? Or are you guys comfortable enough to want to just go for it and, um, and see what develops from it? You know, if we don't ask for it, we won't get it. Um, but, you know, I also don't want to ask for things that we really don't see a value in uh, at this point. Um, do you want to... What are you guys' thoughts? And if we don't go with it, I think we can reallocate that money to someplace else where we might may have more benefit. I don't know. Uh, that was my question. So if we ask for it, we get it, and then we can't fine tune it, we can put it somewhere else. We don't lose it, right? Um, the money has to be spent at one point and allocated at one, yeah. at one point. Um, and I think, you know, uh, we need to be mindful that if we don't use it or spend it, it could go back. Um, but I, it might be better to ask and fine tune it um, than not ask at all. That's just, an you know, one opinion. I think we should ask. That's my opinion. I like the I idea of asking and giving, it, I, and giving them away. I do like that idea. All right. Well, we so we see value in it, but we're just not exactly sure on it. I, it could go in a few different roads. I think the program is a great program, and it's certainly, and if people go back to the same restaurant all the time and they use it, well, that's great for the restaurant. If it makes somebody go out even more, um, that's great. If it helps a family, um, you know, get, you know, to spend get twenty percent more on an on an evening out with kids, that's a win. Um, so I think, you know, maybe we vote it in um, and just say that we want to fine tune specifically the use of it, but this is an, an avenue that we'd like to take advantage of. I, what I love about it is that it's very little um, uh, presence to the towns um, from an employment, I mean, a, an hours perspective, they do kind of do everything. And we do get a branding opportunity in this. If it is an e-card, 
or it, you know, something that they can use off their phone when they purchase it. We do get a branding opportunity on this as well, where it would say EDIC or Town of Wethersfield, you know, whatever logo we want to give them. That was free, as I recall, Joya, right? We wanted to print cards, physical cards. I think that cost, how much did that cost? Was that 3000 it's five thousand dollars if you wanted to get like a logo, like the Shop Weathersfield Dup is logo on the card. And I was thinking if we went the route of wanting to get some pre-printed cards, we could put a sticker on them. They said that that's allowed. You know, we could okay. print we could print some stickers and brand it ourselves if we get the cards delivered to us that we want to hand out like to social services or someone, or even okay. have available somewhere. Mark, can I ask one more question? I hate to Please keep beating this up, but um, and I, I think I already know the answer, but you know, working on the mayor's charity ball, I, we have access to, to uh, people or programs in town that are uh, struggling at the moment. And that's where we can allocate our funds. Do we have the same um, system or ability to find what business, small businesses are struggling in town at the moment or because it's free enterprise, we have no knowledge of that. Does that I'm make not sense? Aware of a resource. Maybe the town, maybe I think only if somebody would out those outreach to the town somehow, I think it would be the only way the town would know. Yeah. Okay. I thought we probably didn't have access to that. Thank you. All right. So to kind of firm the, to, uh, this up, um, I'm, I'm going to just suggest that we make the ask for this um, and uh, with refinement, as Cindy said, on how and where it would be used. Are you guys good with that? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Okay, very good. And last but not least, um, garbage cans. Ms. Joya. Um, the request is to install five permanent garbage cans in Old Weathersfield. The cost is $5,000. Uh, with heightened tourism in Old Weathersfield from the Cove to Garden Street uh, came the potential, came potential trash issues. Store owners in Old Weathersfield have already reported overflowing trash cans, creating a bee and animal issue. So we are looking to curb that problem. Would, would that be a net addition to trash cans? Would that be what? A net addition to trash cans. Are we adding trash cans or replacing inferior ones? Oh, I, it's a good question. Um, I, I don't think know how some of the ones out there are pretty decent. Um, off, although, who was it, Joya? Was it you or Denise? The the owners that um, that bought that building where Village Pizza is, they don't even want them out there. They just said the trash doesn't get picked up because our guys are straight out, and it's trash everywhere, and so they prefer not even to have them there. So, and by the way, um, that amount of money will buy four because the shipping costs are outrageous. Maybe we can I, mean, I was on that call. Here. I think what they were saying was if they're not going to be emptied, then it's a nuisance. If they're emptied, they're okay. They, they like the idea of having play people to put their trash, but if they're overflowing and it becomes a nuisance, then I agree, they wouldn't want them there. So if, the, if this is an issue for, from the town's perspective that they're not able to empty them on a on a steady basis, then I can see where they could take a point that they wouldn't want them, but I think everybody wants them. They just want them to be maintained properly. Do you think that um, that the Shopkeepers Association, if we provided them and said, hey, can you guys give us a hand and here's the trash bags, um, do you think we could ask them to go out and, and empty them or do um, you think that's a non-starter? I have no clue. Well, guys, Old Weathersfield is getting very busy and they do make trash. So um, there is something that needs to be considered here. Um, any additional thoughts? Well, we probably do want to address how we how the, the trash will be picked up. I mean, each of these owners has its own private trash collection too, right? Those are the large containers in the back. 
Mm -hmm. I would assume so, yes. Yeah, so why would the, I mean, is it incumbent on the town to pick up all trash and trash cans that are on sidewalks? No. So, I mean, do we have a assigned responsibility for who picks up trash cans? I mean, cleans them, uh, empties them? I wasn't here when this all happened, but I would assume it was kind of a deal that said if, as we have, as our guys have time to do something, they'll swing by and get them, but it's nothing guaranteed. <coughs> but I don't, I don't know that. So the issue here is not whether or not they're worthwhile. The issue is who's going to dump them. Is that correct? Is that fair? Or that people are going to make trash? I think we know that that's going to happen. <laughs> um, and what are you guys' thoughts here um, on on this particular ask? I support it. We'll, we may get questions on that, and I think we probably should have clarification from merchants that. Um, you know, commercial uh, activity is going to have, you know, create pedestrians and shoppers and they're going to ha have trash. And it seems this, it seems like it's their response. I won't say responsibility, but we need to clarify who's responsible for picking it up. Well, but I, I support it. I support the expenditure. I support it as well. And I think that, you know, environment affects behavior and everything. So if you see trash on the ground, or if a young kid does, and they just throw more trash there, it uh, becomes a problem. Now, I don't know if that is the problem or one of the things we're trying to solve, but I would definitely support it as well. Uh, like Cindy said, we just, it would need a routine pickup, period. You know, no different than a porta potty that doesn't get serviced, right? When you're at, at some event, someone needs to go by on a regular basis. It would need to be a scheduled thing. So would you guys agree that if it, as part of our ask, we would say we'd like to confer with the town to find out, you know, um, garbage removal um, procedure and also maybe exploring with the shopkeepers, so shopkeepers Association that if we provide additional cans, whether or not they would participate, we can reach out to them as well and find out. It's just emptying a, a garbage bag. It's not significant manual labor, it's to their benefit. But I, I think if we added those points in there, it would probably be thoughtful. Who has, um, um, if you have, if you agree with the $5,000 expenditure on the cans, thumbs up. Okay, very good. I have a Joya, we, We'll just question. make a note of that, Joya, that we'll just, you know, we need to confer with the town. I wanna to be thoughtful because it is a realistic number. If we fill in there and nobody empties them for three weeks then you know, we're creating a problem. Okay, on to Salestine Highway or Berlin Turnpike. Um, there's some, a, a couple of well-prepared documents here for both Berlin Turnpike Action Plan and for Silestine Highway. Um, do we want to just give a synopsis on this or do we want to, I've obviously read it. Have you guys read it? So Julia, do you, um, do, um, if you want to send it just for the record, um, just give kind of an overall, very, you know, overall view on the expenditure, et cetera. If you're able to do that, I know it looks like you're back home at the moment. Yeah, um, yeah. Let's see. My, I'm not on mute. Okay, great. Um, so we have a funding request of two hundred thousand uh, dollars of ARPA funding funding um, for an engineer. I call it an engineering and implementation plan uh, to promote economic recovery, improve uh, traffic and pedestrian safety. Um, so. And we point out that it's a state highway and uh, it maximizes vehicular speed, uh, but it poses safety issues and uh, doesn't support our economic recovery. Um, and it doesn't maximize our, our tax base. Um, and you know, and point out the importance of, of this roadway to our town, to our identity, that we have town buildings there. Um, it is our, uh, it, it forms our image the image of the town. Um, we um, need more walkable thoroughfare to support um, more uh, commercial um, uh, development. Um, and um, it has support of the, um, the latest uh, of businesses from the latest survey. Um, we have a unique opportunity for external funding and we should take advantage of it. 
and we do not have the resources to do it in-house. We cannot do this. And if we cannot do this, we can't attract the, the funds that we need um, to um, be able to uh, fund uh, improvements uh, in terms of streetscaping to the highway um, and uh, improved functionality. So um, I think we should make the point, this is really um, a very high valued uh, use of federal funds to promote economic recovery in our town. Um, and so uh, if people have want to add or subtract or modify the, the bulleted points, this is what I got from our discussion. Um, so we want to develop a, a, a vision uh, we need, uh, and a kind of a story, a narrative. Uh, we need design, specific design plans and engineering specifications for, the, uh, uh, for roadway improvements uh, and uh, to reflect our town history, our identity, and to develop a sense of place uh, along the roadway. Um, next bullet, um, we want to, you know, we have developed engineering specifications for, spe for particular projects. Um, we need uh, uh, technical help in sequencing the, uh, of these engineering projects. So we develop a, a multi-stage plan uh, that um, builds out our overall uh, uh, vision for the Silenstein Highway. Um, we need technical assistance to an advocacy to submit those proposals, to be able to access um, you know, uh, billions of dollars on, of uh, state and federal uh, monies uh, that I probably should make a point that that are that this is a very competitive process. I think I can put language in there, um, and we need technical assistance uh, to maximize uh, Connecticut DOT cooperation and you know try to gain approval of modifications. Um, again, we need more technical assistance uh, to implement the projects, and we need also to promote. Uh, the Silestine to private developers. Uh, so we need some folks with the knowledge of um, uh, potential and interested um, private developers. So uh, that's the plan. And um, we, I think we should point out that if we don't do it, we're not gonna get uh, federal dollars. We're not gonna get funding. Our highway is gonna look the same and we have the status quo. And we can watch other towns improve their central business districts, uh, improves our desirability, not only to businesses, but to live as a community. Um, Tom pointed out, and I didn't put in, but we, you know, a discussion point that, um, you know, our sense of place uh, and the importance of such a highway is changing. And it, we may not always be, you know, thinking of a highway in terms of, of just commuting from here to there, but uh, more people may uh, commute on, on a more, intermittent basis, maybe not every day, uh, and are staying home so uh, for, for work and uh, working remotely. So uh, we need to address, uh, you know, the, our, the people who live here and who use the, uh, and the businesses along the highway. And that creates r real estate value, value to our town, to our residents, as well as to the business community. Pat, let me ask you something, because I know that there is concern on the council not to spend any money uh, at, like this on the Silestine or the Berlin Turnpike. Do you think something like this is going to fly? Because if not, I don't want to waste the subcommittee's time tomorrow. Uh, to be honest, something like this didn't. Nobody really had an appetite for it. Um, they had uh, a plan. What was back from the original one was 2006, uh, and nothing ever really got done with it. Um, just speaking frankly, when I brought it up to uh, both Councillor Hill and uh, Deputy Mayor Mazzarella, there didn't seem to be a, uh, a whole lot of interest in spending, you know, 33% of the money that we were allocating to EDIC on another plan. Um, as much as I think that maybe we could tap into those federal infrastructure dollars, uh, potentially, it's still a question mark. And I think, uh, I think the committee is looking for lower hanging fruit. Mm -hmm. Just mm -hmm. trying to be as transparent as I can. So would the so would economic development be able to keep that two hundred thousand, for example, for Silas Dean, but allocate it in a different manner, or would it go to other projects? Because you know, Pat, we got a list a mile long. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I I would recommend that uh, you find uh, a different use, uh, maybe Silas Highway specific for the two hundred thousand. 
um, more, you know, just maybe more of like beautification projects, uh, stuff like that. Um, something that the town can see immediately. I think that's that's sort of what they're looking for now. Um, just so like streets. I, I don't want to burst anybody's bubble here, but um, it's uh, it, it, we're they're, they're again spent the thought that spending money on another plan is just it's really just not. I don't think it's going to fly. So I would suggest figuring out another uh, another way to spend that two hundred thousand dollars would be my recommendation. And Pat, would you think if we came to the group tomorrow and just kind of said, you know, look, we've been kicking around these ideas, but we're not sure they're going to fly. Can we come back in a couple of weeks? Do you think, I don't think there's going to be an issue. No, doing there wouldn't that. be any issue. Okay. No. All but, right. No. I mean, you know what? most of the I agree with. Can I just add, I think that, you know, based on our discussion yesterday and all of my research and others on this subject, that this uh, redesign of the Celestine Highway is absolutely critical to the future of the town in terms of municipal finance, in terms of culture, in the trajectory of our town, in terms of development. Uh, there was recent plans that when we sort of projected like what the uh, education figures I think would look like in terms of the number of students that there wasn't gonna be a growth um, and Frankly, the concern I have is that if we have a perspective that long-term there's no development, no growth in population, uh, you know, that, that's a really, that, that's not great, right? And I think that this plan sort of stands at the core, this economic and, and cultural corridor sort of stands at the core of us as a town and our future. And I think that it's absolutely crucial given that that we allocate resources to be able to effectively address uh, the corridor um, in the long term. And this specific plan, which I would like to thank uh, Cindy for writing, um, I think is actually pretty authoritative. And what's best about it is the fact that we have targeted an interest in supporting engineering and in implementation. That's what the $200,000 is for. And that is a significant departure from previously uh, when we had the Fuss and O'Neill plan, which gave uh, you know, broad, broadly discussed options. In this case, we are dead set on creating engineering plans and the implementation that will allow us to you know, bring these projects to light. Um, and that's definitely a different aspect and one that needs to be acknowledged here. This isn't asking the same thing as we did those decades ago. This is completely different. Um, again, I, and I respect that and I appreciate the explanation. I'm just telling you what it looks like. Uh, well, right? you... It's just that in the first sentence, we've dictated this difference. Okay. So I wanna make sure that we don't get misunderstood. Yeah, I, I really appreciate having this conversation now because, um, you know, this, this is, and, and I'm glad, uh, Pat, you're just bringing up, you know, kind of the thinking uh, of council. And I think knowing that it, I haven't pitched it the right way, because it's really not a plan. It's really, we need consultant expertise to supplement our engineering department to articulate the projects and the sequencing of projects. And, and maybe it would be more targeted. Um, and I, and I, I hear what you're saying, um, Adam, that maybe it would be more targeted, say maybe a hundred thousand to you know, provide the technical expertise and make the case we just simply don't have the, the hands on deck on, in, you know, in town to be able to articulate these engineering projects. And so we need the technical expertise to, um, uh, to, to draw the design specifications and to provide the sequencing. And also the wherewithal to, um, to uh, uh, promote and, and uh, to, to submit these projects for, for approval because that's the only way those projects are going to be approved. We can't just, we can't just ask for money that we would like to improve our highway and that we have a, these beautification projects in mind. 
to get any kind of funding with those projects, those engineering specifications, those projects, as I understand it, they need to be drawn out, articulated, presented. So I think we can reframe this as a, uh, a consultant uh, expertise to supplement uh, our, our, our engineering department, yeah, uh, department. And maybe we can take a portion of that. Maybe a hundred thousand is it for a direct project. Well, we don't know what it is because we don't have the specifications. And we don't have the technical expertise to even be able to make that kind of recommendation. Yeah, and I'm, I'm again, I'm, I'm listening to what, you, what, what both of you guys are saying and I certainly appreciate it. I'm just trying to relay the message that you know, we've talked about separately as a subcommittee, how to utilize these ARPA funds. Um, again, I'm not saying that the, our minds can't be changed uh, when you're presenting, but what I am saying is that the initial reaction to something like this was we'd rather focus more on low hanging fruit and beautification projects along the South Dean than consulting work and further plans for possibly future development, especially considering these funds are so limited. So to, to, to utilize 33% of the budget that we're allocating to improve economic development towards a potential consultant or a plan. I'm just, I'm just trying to relay the message of how that was viewed initially. Right. I'm trying to strike it and down. I, or, you know, I'm just, I'm just trying to, no, I'm trying to be transparent so you guys can, yeah. you know, I, I want you guys to get the money. Yeah. And it's very helpful to get that conversation. And maybe Adam and I can work on the, on the, the language. And maybe we don't need the full 200,000 because it's really going to articulate specific projects that we've already, you know, uh, um, had, you know, presented to us in a very, in a general way uh, uh, in the plan that we did 15 years ago. Um, so Adam, I, would you be willing to work on this? Uh, the language of the, uh, we could work on the language of this a little bit. Sure. Pat, I can hear where you guys are coming from with council not wanting to give money to a plan, but one of the things that uh, Mark had come up with in his suggestions up front was to improve some major intersections along the Silestine Highway, like Town Hall, you know, like Knott Street, Wells Road, Prospect Street, with the lighting and landscaping that was done at Town Hall. You know, maybe if they you know if they go in looking for funds to improve these corners to look like the aesthetic with the lights and stuff and do as many corners as we could would take care of that and you know maybe get some approval for the 200,000 mm -hmm. and we do as much as we could I mean that would include design purchase the whole nine yards it might only get us one corner in today's dollars because I'm trying to remember what it cost us to do town uh, the town hall corner years ago but at least we could show that we're doing something and not just creating a plan. We're mm. going to fix up at least one corner or two corner, as many as we can with the funds we're getting. I agree. Can, can I make Wait, a council? Sorry. Go ahead, Adam. I'm sorry. Please go. I was just wondering, given your conversations with the council, you talked about beautification. Uh, in terms of infrastructural changes, if they were to entertain them, would an emphasis on safety be something that they would be most amenable to? Is that, is that question directed at me? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, so we, again, we, we've had only preliminary conversations uh, and we've only specifically talked about beautification, but if there was excess money, I don't see why we wouldn't talk about improving safety along Salstein Highway, but it's also complicated because like we keep talking about, it is a state highway. Okay, you know, thank you. Right, and they're okay, not gonna, they're not, they, I, I just think council needs to understand, and I'm not an expert, it's what I've been told, that uh, to get any kind of funding, uh, and there are a lot of dollars out there, and this is a t it's timely, uh, and there's a lot of competition for that, we need um, engineering specifications. We need a project that we can, um, others can look at and that we can explain that is drafted out. It, it's not a plan, it's, Adam, what's the word for it? We need engineering renderings or uh, assistance for implementation uh, specification. And we do need engineering renderings that's right it's, it's called an engineering rendering okay yeah all right so i mean i think that's what we really are uh 
that's what we need. And we need, uh, maybe we just, uh, I mean, it One would other, be better sorry. if we, go ahead. It would be better if we had, if we told a story and we have a narrative, but maybe that's, you know, that's the best of all worlds. But if we had engineering reverend, renderings and it, at least we can have a consultant tell us, well, here are um, two or three projects that you can do first. Um, and that for, uh, for you know, either a combination of aesthetics and safety improvements. Cindy, just for time purposes, uh, would you guys, uh, you and Adam, be able to potentially uh, shoot me a joint email of what you're talking about? I want to keep this meeting moving along, so I got to be out of here by 2 o'clock. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a few of us who have a two, because Denise and I do. Yeah. yeah. Let, me, um, okay. let me just add one I, thing. Go ahead, Deb. You wanted to share something. No, I was just saying I have to be out of it too as, as oh. well. That's all I was saying. <laughs> all right. Sorry. Um, let, yeah. me, let me make a, um, just a, a suggestion. Um, one of the, you guys know where I stand regarding the Southstein Highway. I'm all for improving it, safety, better usage, but I'm also trying to balance that with what, from a realistic perspective, what we can do. And I think, you know, we need to find out, in, and maybe the number is 50,000, where we can set aside and get an engineering rendering and try to isolate one block as you guys have talked about in the past where there's where we start someplace and we get this rendering because you're right i think you said it would had to be drawn out articulated and presented cindy and that is important but you have to have the right project and we have to make sure that we get buy-in and permission from dot there's a lot of there's a lot of dominoes that have to fall before we can get to the end use, which is a safer, more pedestrian friendly, maybe more bike friendly, whatever could be reasonably done. Maybe we need to think about, can we get from a budget perspective, this engineering rendering and saying, we want, we want here's the block that we pick. It's from, Joya, you, you picked out a couple of blocks at one point um, that we can maybe think about of improving and find out what we can realistically accomplish. I think I wanna, bring out the point and maybe our proposals don't have this is that this 200,000 isn't for a drawing or a concept only it is from concept to construction the 200,000 will carry us from getting that engineering rendering to articulating our story to putting everything to getting the community's feedback to applying for grant funding and then to getting us to construction. So the 200,000, I'm not sure how to, how to phrase it to say that it is, it's a package, it's not a one item coming out of this. The beautification will come at the end. Um, but in order to get to that beautification, we have to do these first few steps. And help me articulate that correctly. We can work on that, but I think that was a fantastic uh, start. Yeah, that's exactly, I think, what we were after. I mean, I could, you know, we could try to break it down and say 70,000 goes to the engineering and 20,000 goes to, uh, you know, writing our story and 30,000 goes to doing a poll and engaging CROG to help us do a survey. Um, and then, you know, another whatever, I don't know what's left, they didn't add it up, but 20,000 to go apply for grant dollars. But, you know, that is, then we're going to get again in the weeds and say, you really need 20,000 to do a survey? And I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's, it's approximately between talking to the town engineer, talking to a couple consultants, you need to budget approximately 10 to 15% of your total project cost for an upfront um, investment by the town. So this 200,000 is a project up to about $2 million, whatever that entails. If it's uh, a mile stretch on Silas Dean or whatever. Um, so that's, that's where we're, I think, I think that's where the disconnect is. Our ultimate goal is to have beautification, but we can't even put up, you know, we can't plant trees without getting an engineering drawing. So, a rendering, so. 
Joy, I know at one point we talked about getting an actual breakdown of what you just said from, from Fuss and O'Neill for the 200 grand, how much goes here, how much is here. I know we haven't gotten that. No. Um, and I mean, I think that's probably a big piece that's missing, um, that it is all encompassing, but the devil is in the details. And what we think is engineering, maybe that's what they don't think or vice versa. There's a lot of stuff I think we need to get more detail on. Um, I guess but, my but the bottom line is it's 10 to 15% of a total project. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at projects to do two half mile sections of Silas Dean or eight corners or whatever that entails. We're looking at a project from about 1.7 to $2 million. Hence the approximate amount of 200,000 for this pre-work to get us all the way through to the construction. That's the point of this. It's not to create another piece of paper and say, okay, now, you know, we spent $200,000. Now, what are we going to do? This is to get us all the way to beautifying that corner or that strip of uh, road, whatever that is. So if it was a $500,000 project, their fee would be 50 to 75,000. Is that fair? Right. Exactly. Oh, okay. Exactly. So this is my point. If we can focus on Maybe this block that we're talking about is a half a million dollars. And maybe the spend is 50 to 75,000 and not 200,000. And that's the vagaries from that from, from on this is what is getting to me. There's no detail on exactly. So they came up with a number. We got a number of 200,000. Everything is kind of loosey goosey. And I think there's merit here, but we haven't tightened it down to identify what's that first patch that we want to go. What's the lowest hanging fruit that we want to um, put a better spin on on the Southstein Highway and get a ballpark and what would that cost? Because maybe the $200,000 figure is not the number that we need. Maybe it's 50,000. Okay, I, I know people have to leave um, okay. soon. Um, so what I would recommend is tomorrow you go to the subcommittee and what you say is, you know, we have some thoughts, but we need more time and um, we'll be back in two to three weeks with a, um, a more solidified plan because you guys are gonna be here for another hour or two hours. And, and also tomorrow, you only have a very short time because you're not the only ones on the agenda for the subcommittee. So I would stick with the marketing that you've approved and um, then just say that you need more time to discuss your other proposal and leave it like that. Pat, okay. just so you know, we there's $200,000 that we'd like to look at Berlin Turnpike and Southstein Highway. So the, the $200,000 that we discussed today we're very confident on. It's the other 400 that we need to couch the right way uh, to get the council's approval on, just so you know up front. And um, and we'll we'll tighten this thing up. All right, thanks can... everybody, I gotta go, see ya. Okay. Thanks everyone. Cindy, did you get my message? No, <laughs> uh, email? Okay. Hey, I'm willing to hang around, but if, I know Bonnie's got a yeah, split. I you guys have any more comments? I'm, I'm, I'd love um, to hear them. So how many, uh, I'm on my my um, cell phone. So how many people are in right now? You, me, and Mar and uh, Adam? Uh, Tom is here, Denise is here, Adam, Marco, um, oh, Tommy, okay. and oh, Joy. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, um, I mean, I'm willing to t uh, entertain uh, um, other comments and I appreciate, you know, what I may think Pat got off. I, I appreciate, uh, kind of the feedback that we got from Pat Penelo, I think it was very helpful in understanding where our council is and funding this and what we need to articulate. I think, uh, well, I would be happy to hear others um, if anybody else has any other comments. Otherwise, Adam and I can go back to the drawing board and articulate this a little bit more clearly. I'm gonna have to run to a two o'clock as well, but. Um, I'd love to hear more about it at some point in the future. Thank you, Cindy and Adam, for your work. Sure. I think um, what we can you, do Mark is and everyone else. Thank you, Joya, Tom, Tony, Denise. Thank you all. See you, Marco. Okay, take care. Bye-bye. Adam, um, can is there any way that you can look at you mentioned the software on the on the meeting the other day, which I thought was very cool. Does that does that bring in any pricing assessments? Um, on projects? Is that part of that software? Um, does it build in a potential budget 
on on that, or is it really more the engineering side only? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. Okay, I'm, I'm looking. Um, if the issue that the council has is, you know, they want low hanging fruit and the number is too big, if we can, and like we said, if if we have a half a million dollar project, then our ask would be fifty thousand um, to seventy five thousand. Um, if the project is a half a million, if it's if it's a million, then our ask is a hundred thousand, not two hundred thousand. Um, and I think if if it would be worth our while to find out from Fuss and O'Neill what is okay. So you said two hundred grand, we get it. That's twelve percent. Enjoy. I know you talked with uh, with Derek, and he said they're spot on on what their percentage is. Um, can you help us sell this um, and break down of the two hundred thousand? What's the first piece and how much does it cost? What's the second piece and what does it cost? Um, I think uh, it's fun. Sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. I was just going to say, I mean, if we're going to be asking Fuss, I don't know how hard, um, how accurate these figures need to be, but um, whether, would they, whether they would be helping us to estimate these components and if that beginning of a relationship necessitates that we use them. Um, down the line, or if they're just helping us advise us about, uh, you know, making an estimate. I'd prefer if it was just the latter. Um, yeah, and and has have we talked reached out to Close Jensen Miller in town? Um, I know they're obviously a well-established firm as well. I don't know if we get a hometown discount from them. If we can buy half a million of those cards and get a 20% increase. Um, Trying to make a joke here, it's not working. Um, Another organization that has done um, these kind of projects uh, where you have a corridor redesign and then does the perform sort of like the community coordination um, is Goody Clancy. They have performed um, projects for Hartford, uh, including an I-84 Hartford project uh, when they were looking at sort of transforming the downtown corridor. Um, so that's another firm we can consider too. Okay. Well, um, Bonnie and, and, and uh, Pat seem to think we've got time. You know, we can present a third of our budget and two thirds of it we need to, to fine tune. Um, uh, and we'll get more feedback from them, directly from them tomorrow on if they're, what, what is low hanging fruit to them? Um, and maybe there's a fit on what we wanna do and what they wanna to do. Tom, any other um, comments, Tom Carson? 